Here are 10 things that I wish I knew when I first started playing Planet Zoo. So if you're just starting to play Planet Zoo, this video could help you. This is not going to be a long beat around the bush video. It's going to be straight to the point and informative. So let's get into it. When I first started playing franchise mode, I struggled to make a profit, but with the right kind of layout, buying only the necessities, focusing on education and maximizing your revenues with shops, it is so easy. In fact, I recently tried out a, a franchise zoo with one animal, which was the common warthog and it was successful i was in profit year after year and that was with one animal and having only the necessities in staff and guest facilities don't overcomplicate it don't start building off for looks at the start remember you can always change the way things looks but you can never get money back and if you do want to know how to create a successful starting layout and little tips and tricks on starting your franchise zoo i have got a full tutorial on the channel the pathing system sucks. Well, it doesn't suck, but it can be a bit of a pain in the ass, causing all kinds of problems when you're trying to use the terrain tool and making it difficult to get your habitat barriers flush towards the path. But you can alter the settings in the bottom right to make life a little bit easier and being able to create stuff like perfect circles by turning angle snap on. There's a whole variety of different settings to play about with here, so utilize them. And on the other tab, you've got angle snap, length, camera width, and align to grid with the square edges option. If you tick this, it will change your circular path into a square one, obviously. And when you've got a line to grid on, it makes for perfect squares, like so, making perfect plaza areas or food court areas. Next up, we've got the fact that creativity is endless. If you can think about it, you can probably build it within Planet Zoo. And I'm leading on from paths because if you don't like the paths in the game, you can just cover them with your own custom paths like you can see here. Run a path underneath and your guests will still walk over it. And when I say creativity is endless, I really do mean that. You can even forget about certain in-game mechanics like the barriers even existed just create your own barriers like this and then run a null barrier through it or around it you can see my barrier gate is here if i click on it you will see i've run a null barrier all around the edge which still keeps your animals in because you've created your own custom barriers so let your creative juices flow get creative and see what you can come up with but please bear in mind if you are a new player play through the campaign missions first Please play through the campaign missions first before you jump in sandbox mode and try and get creative. Learn to understand the game before becoming an expert in the game. Which brings us on to our next point, which is advanced building tips and advanced movements. You can see here I've just selected this piece. If I press X, it will take me into advanced move. And I really do wish I knew this when I first started creating stuff. You can ever so slightly move it in, in any direction you want. If you press X again, it helps you rotate it. Angle snap is on at the moment. You can see it snapping to 15 degrees. If you want to turn angle snap off, you can. Learn these little tricks. I mean, I've got loads of tutorials on my own channel of advanced movement tricks for Planet Zoo. Go and check them out. There's loads more tricks, like if you delete something and then you press Control Z on your keyboard, it will bring it back. I wish I knew that when I first started playing. This game can be as advanced as you yourself want to make it. So play through the campaign, jump into sandbox and learn some advanced building tips. If you need a little help in hand or you don't want to actually build habitats or buildings yourself, you can just download them off the Steam Workshop page. I, when I first started playing this, didn't realize I can download blueprints and have them in my game what other people have made. For instance, if you want some kind of like Arabic style towers like these, you can just download them off the workshop, play some and boom, they are in your zoo now. There's a whole host of amazing creators out there, so utilize what they are building. It, like stuff like this, what I've created, these are backdrops for habitats. Just select whichever you want, put it as a backdrop of your habitat and it just helps you play the game in a more easy way. Work smart, not hard. There's all sorts on there, from waterfalls to rock work to full on zoos. You can pretty much download anything. There's a lot of amazing creators out there. I mean, if you want, even want 
this one I've created a toilet roll stand in the shape of a toilet roll which sells toilet roll next to a toilet it's for some reason you can but here it is the hands down best thing on the steam workshop blueprint well in my opinion anyway and that is this archer now you might be thinking archer it's just an archer it's quite cool no it serves a purpose this archer is the exact same size as your guest which will be in your zoo so this helps you create barriers an in-game custom but like i mentioned with the custom barrier situation with advanced movement tips earlier this will help so much because now you know where to go on scale if you build a barrier what just goes underneath this archer's arms it will look to scale when your guests enter your zoo there's loads of different terrain tips and tutorials I can show you, but something what I didn't actually realize when I first started playing Planet Zoo is that you can recolor water. And now you can actually add bubbles and mist as well. So all you have to do is click on it. You click on the top here, customize. And then there's presets here like Amazon, Everglade, and tropical i kind of like the tropical one myself you can even change different settings like if it's see-through or not and then you can add bubbles and mist at number seven when i first started playing planet zoo this i don't think this existed but that is planet zoo mods that's right if you didn't know you can get all kind of animals what we don't currently have in the game install them into the game and then play with them to do this, you just need to simply head over to nexusmods.com, create an account and log in. Search up Planet Zoo and you'll find all the mods for it. There's a whole mod community on here and a lot of brilliant modders do really good work. And our fellow Planet Zoo players also, from Planet Zoo animal mods to even game breaking mechanics. So if you do want aquatic animals and birds in Planet Zoo, you can do now. To get mods into your game, it's quite simple. Find the mod you want, click on manual download, download it into your computer files. Once it's downloaded, use an application like WinWire to unpack it, copy it over and paste it into your OVL data file of Planet Zoo. To access the file, this is what you need to do. Go on your own Steam page and where it says Planet Zoo, you need to right click and then go on properties and this will open up the properties of Planet Zoo, obviously. <laughs> go into local files and then go into browse. Now this will bring up the actual files itself, as you can see here. Now we want to find OVL data and that is in Win64. So double click on that and there it is, OVL data, click on that. And then in here, you basically want to paste the file you just downloaded and then open up your game and boom, you will have the mod in your game. If you do want a more detailed tutorial on downloading and installing mods into Planet Zoo, then go and check it out. I've got a tutorial on the channel. Something what not a lot of people actually utilize. And some of these settings are brilliant as well. When in sandbox mode, you have an extra tab here, what obviously says sandbox. Now there's animal settings, guest settings, economy settings, and staff settings. But there's a few interesting things we can actually do with this. If you really just want to get creative and build stuff, you can go into animal settings and turn pretty much everything off if you wish to do so. You've got stuff in here like animal welfare, animal death, animal illness, social group, overcrowded, injury fights, as well as the habitat welfare like the temperature, needs, and the cleanliness. You can even choose to turn off protesters if you wish. But the most important one in this category, in my opinion, is enable escapes. If you turn this off, your animals can obviously not escape giving you free use to build however you want to stick animals in and they will stay in and you don't have to worry about you know degrading of barriers or them escaping through little gaps a really good one to have on is under economy settings and enable to power everything now if we do this it powers everything we don't have to worry about power sources being included in our sandbox zoos the other good thing about this is you can actually make it a challenge for yourself so you can see amount of cash here and enable conservation credits and you can actually choose how much cash you start with just like you would do in franchise mode 
but you can make this a challenge without the limitations of doing research like you would have to do in franchise mode. Have a play around with what works for you when playing sandbox mode. Have a look at these settings. Some of them can be useful, some of them can be entertaining, and some of them you just basically is a necessity at this point when playing sandbox mode. And I really do wish that these settings I knew about when I first started playing Planet Zoo. At number 9, again I don't know if this actually existed when I first played Planet Zoo because it was a bit of a secret. I've actually done a video showing this off but I'll show you here quickly. It's basically codes, you could say cheat codes, you could say easter eggs, um, little fun things what Planet Zoo themselves has added into the game to just make things a little bit more fun. So let's take a look at them. You can rename your guest and your staff certain names and they will do certain things. So for this instance, let's go on this keeper. We're going to pause time just so we can capture him here. And then we're going to go into his name. Now, there's a different code of them. In my full tutorial on my channel will be a full list of all the codes you can use. I think there's about five or six different codes. But I'll show you this one. So if we rename this keeper to keeper... Adam, like so, we click enter and we press play, he will break out in a nice little dance with a nice little fan for us. How cool is that? For this one we're going to select any guest and delete their name and we're going to change their name to J Holt Hewson. So J Holt Hewson, like this. Now we'll enter that and then when we press play you're going to see something quite magnificent happen. And there we go. How crazy is that? Some of them have even landed inside of the habitat underwater. <laughs> Don't ask me how. But how great is that? How amazing. What a fun implementation Planet Zoo have done here. And last but definitely not least, at number 10, it's not something I wish I knew when I first started Planet Zoo. It's something I wish I had. And that is patience. Honestly, a lot of people rush straight into this game. They skip the career mode and then they wonder why they can't build stuff. Honestly, it starts slow. Start with career, then go into um, franchise mode, and then challenge, time scenarios, and the last thing on your mind should be sandbox mode. I, want, I know you want to create these amazing um, structures and habitats, what your brain is coming up with, these ideas. But learn to play the game first or you're just going to get stuck. Honestly, watch tutorials on YouTube. That's what I did. That's what actually inspired me to create my own YouTube channel and provide tutorials for you. So do the same. And learn to play the game before jumping into sandbox mode. And when in sandbox mode, again, still be patient. I always say in my videos, patience and perseverance prevails. It really does. And with that being said, that concludes the 10 things I wish I knew when I first started playing Planet Zoo. My name's Adam. If you're new around here, then hit that subscribe button. If this video did help or entertain you in any way, then please hit that like button. And I will catch you in the next Planet Zoo video.